Dum dum Oh, sorry. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we are going to be installing a rear diffuser on my Mazda 3. Now, when searching for a diffuser, a handful that you can choose from. So I came across this problem when I had my Subaru. Cars are kind of new, so we got to wait a little bit for companies to start making stuff for our vehicles. But this version has been out since 2019, but I still see people running the same exact diffusers. Um, there's not too much to choose from just in general. I pride myself on being different and I wanted something different. So I picked this diffuser up from a company called Pro Tuning. Now I got it from eBay, but it came from a country called Lativia. It's situated between uh, Lithuania and Estonia. I've never heard of this country before, but that's super cool. So I ordered this one because simply I've never seen anyone run it or just seen it in general. But from looking at the stock photos, I'm still a little iffy about it, if I like it or not. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna even like it. Damn, this dude is bumping. What the f My ideal diffuser would be the Brayson R, if that's how you say it, Brayson, Bison, Bison R, Thai style one. That's the one I wanna get, but it's been sold out for like the past five months. Uh, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Is it gonna be in stock anytime soon? Who knows, but when it does, I will be getting that one. But anyway, right off the rip guys, opening the box, I will say I was a little disappointed. There were scratches already all over this thing. They didn't add any bubble wrap or anything. They just threw it straight in the box. There you go. Um, so I will ding it for that just off the rip, but it is what it is. So here's the bottom lip right here. And we got four fins that we're gonna be putting on. Also, we got a couple self-tapping screws and a couple screws to put on the fins. Uh, no instructions, so eyeball it and figure out how to do this. And there we have it, guys. Four little screws, pre-drilled holes and everything, um, and you're looking like this. Double-sided tape to stick on the back, I guess. For the money I paid, poor build quality. Well, not poor build quality, but poor measurements. This fin right here is a little bit longer than this one. See how this one's sticking up a little more than this? I mean, it's not gonna matter. I mean, because this, this part's going underneath the car, but I just thought I'd, I'd point that out. So now let's go ahead and go to the back of the car and see what we got to do next. Okay guys, so upon looking up underneath the car, there is a crash bar right here. We're gonna have to remove so we can get access to the, the bottom of the bumper so we can start drilling. We have four pop rivets right here. We'll just remove those real quick. Okay. And there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here. Just remove those and then pull it straight down just like that. Now, if there's one thing that I will give as a positive for this, so it looks like it fits perfectly right in between the two exhaust cutouts. So it's like the perfect dimension right here. So I don't really have to do too much measurement. So we'll just line it up, tape it up and see what we got. So now that we have it all taped up, we're just gonna go ahead and go back underneath the car and see uh, where we wanna start drilling. Coming back underneath the car, I'm gonna go ahead and take back everything I said wrong with this thing. It lines up perfectly with the four pop rivets that we just removed. Since everything is lined up perfectly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick this back in here because it looks like all we have to do is put on these little clips and then drill our four screws and that's it. I went off camera trying to figure out how to get those rivets in. I said, screw it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about this. I went ahead and dove into the toolbox and got me some bolts, some nuts and bolts. This will be a lot easier and probably a lot more secure too. So I got me some bolts, they're not big enough. So what we're gonna do is expand the holes just a little bit. Okay, one thing I'm noticing is it's not lined up properly like at all. 3M's not sticking at all. Um, get out of here wasp, You're not invited. Okay guys, so it is in place. The only problem I'm seeing is, as you can see, if you can see, the 3M is not sticking to the bumper. You have to like push it into place and it's not working out properly. So obviously there's a huge gap right here. It's not making contact. It's supposed to be sitting like this. It's not wanting to do that. So I'm gonna have to probably go off camera and figure out how I'm gonna get these to stick properly. So I'll be right back. All right guys, so I did end up going to an auto parts store. I got some adhesive glue and some extra double-sided tape, but I might be returning it because looking at it now and actually taking a step back and looking at it, I think it's supposed to be like this. I think 
these gaps are supposed to be here. When I actually push it up like this, it's kind of flexing the bumper. Like it's kind of unnatural for it to be like this. I think it's supposed to sit like this. I'm gonna go ahead and return all that stuff that I got because I think we're gonna rock it like this. So with that said guys, the shark fins are on the Mazda 3. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.